Hi, this is Fountain, and today I want to talk about consent. Now, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about, I guess, is going to be within the framework of um, intimate kind of relationships. However, there isn't really anything to say that what these concepts are don't apply to other areas of one's life. They can most definitely apply to other areas of, of one's life. And the reason I wanted to talk about it is because I actually um, enjoy running a consent workshop at small um, music and lifestyle festivals that I go to. And obviously given the current situation, a lot of uh, those events have been um, cancelled. And I thought, why not transfer some of that um, knowledge that I share in that environment? Why not provide it here online um, for... I guess more of a global um, audience to um, to receive, should I say. Now, um, I guess the first thing I wanted to go into is what is consent, and then I wanted to go into why is it important, and then the last one I wanted to finish off with is what we can do to um, create a better um, consent culture around us. So yes, number one, what is consent? I'm going to go through um, some... I guess I would call them um, guiding principles as to what consent is and um, obviously number one is that it's informed and it's informed information so it's talking to each other about you know the health of yourself and also um, the relations that you may be involved in so an example could be you want to talk about um, maybe it could be to do with your mental health it could be to do with your physical health obviously that can then relate into like your sexual health if this is an intimate um relating space and then also if you're into um different kinds of relating so you might be into open relating or polyamory or you might be in a monogamous relationship and therefore the person that you're relating with um especially as an intimate space they should um be informed of of your relations and um, because that will obviously influence their decision as to how they want to relate with you and um you know, how can you really consent fully to something if you don't know the full um, story of it, if that makes sense. The next thing, obviously, is to be honest. Um, so don't be deceptive about um, anything, really, especially when it comes to um, to consent and, like, what it is that you want and what it is that you're happy to receive. Um, be specific. So... You know, being detailed in your request or your question is usually helpful. Um, you know, being clear, obviously, being explicit in what it is that um, that you're comfortable with and that you're not comfortable with. Being enthusiastic, obviously. So, like, is the information that you're giving or that you're receiving is that being freely given? You know, are you? What you're saying is that just like easily coming out. Um, you know, is there no kind of hesitation? The same goes for you listening to the other person that you are relating with. Being level-headed. Now, this is obviously a big one, uh, especially when it comes to, like, festivals that um, I talk at because I guess the theory is that intoxicated people can't really give consent. And I know there's somewhat of a debate about um, different substances and um, to what level of intoxication and and I'm not really here to discuss that um, the nuances that people have around this principle um, it's more or less just a state of um, reminding you that you know if someone is intoxicated that you are relating with maybe you want to think twice about that and talk to each other about meeting up later at a time when maybe they're not intoxicated and the same goes for yourself also are you able to actually fully check in with the aspects of yourself as to whether you can consent to that you know it kind of comes down to you know the different um i guess indicators that you have within yourself you know is there um like obviously one of the number one things that you know when people are intimate relating you know they're they're checking in with their um sexual connection of course but there's also things like your your gut what is your gut telling you your heart what is your heart telling you um, you know, and what is your head telling you? And then if you want to go higher, then obviously you can talk about spirit guides, whatever. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to talk much more about the three-dimensional um, 
aspects of uh, someone's I guess sensory abilities so making sure you're checking in with those things and um, moving on to the next point obviously consent is actually temporary um, you know I feel like we're, we're hopefully moving through these times where we're now realizing that um, just because someone said yes to something um, yesterday does not mean that they're saying yes to it today or even if they said yes to it like five minutes ago and then the circumstances change are they you know do they still consent with it so it's good to check in and just to see how um, you're feeling and how the other person is feeling um, especially if the circumstances have changed from when I guess the initial kind of conversation or communication was had around consent um, now obviously make it fun um, you know like knowing what the other person wants and desires you know that should be fun that shouldn't you know, if it's, that's not something that you consider to be fun, then I don't know, maybe I'd want you to question um, why it is that you are, I guess, connecting, wanting to connect to this person. Um, and then obviously it's mandatory. At the end of the day, it should be mandatory, um, you know, like, because if it's not, it just puts people at risk. And, like, I understand there is... Um, a lot of communication that's had between people that's not necessarily verbal. You know, we do it all the time in the way, um, the, the tone of our voice, um, you know, even the speed of the voice, the way the body um, reacts, the way um, the other person is looking at you, there's energetic things, la da 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 da. Um, but it's, I feel it's very important, especially here, I'm talking here on this platform, um, to promote the actual verbalization of, of um, consent and communication. It's, um, it should always be the baseline. Um, that's what I want to, <coughs> I guess, promote um, to everybody because everybody understands that um, aspect. Well, I'd like to hope that they do. Now, the next point I want to go into is, <coughs> excuse me, why it is so important and I guess I can just provide you um, some perspectives of what I see and number the, one of the number one things is societal norms and uh, it doesn't take much to look at things like TV shows and films and they kind of often skip over the um, actual aspects of like obtaining consent and um, I mean I know th I do see there's, there's some discussion obviously around like asking what it is that someone maybe desires but there's not really a lot of um, talk within those kind of um, fictitious kind of realities that you know they do provide us with some kind of subliminal messaging that whether we're aware of it or not as to um, how we go about our day-to-day -day lives so you know as much as the film industry or TV programs, I'm not saying for this is this is across the board for all of these things, but they often um, kind of give you give off this idea of like it's awkward or it's weird if you ask for consent if you're not actually communicating what it is that you want to know about the person, what they would like to receive and what you would like to give. So we need to move past that. We also need to get really comfortable with. Um, giving our no's and also receiving no's from other people and I guess that comes down to um, you know if you're afraid to ask to tell somebody no then should you really be um, in that space in the first place and you know if you do give a no and the other person doesn't react you know what you would consider very well to it um, you know they can they react to it in quite an unhealthy way then that's probably a good indicator to you as to whether you should even continue on um, commit like connecting with this person in an intimate way and then I guess the, the other bit is being able to um, be able to ask for what it is that you desire but with no expectation that it has to be followed through and <clears throat> Obviously, like if you're saying no, then of course the person should respect no, but it's the thing of, you know, I guess it comes down to doing a bit of inner work and being comfortable within yourself. And um, so if you're able to do some of that kind of work, you're going to, you should 
well, not to say that it would happen, but you should become uh, more comfortable with giving no's and receiving no's from other people. And this is the aspect of um, the consent workshop that I run at festivals that I really like to go through in a more practical exercise of getting people together and um, just getting them to, to give no's and receive no's and then coming back together and sort of, I guess, um, then reflecting on that exercise and what that that, make that person feel or, or think within that um, within those scenarios. And then obviously last but least I want to talk about is what can we do to promote, you know, a better consent culture um, within our, you know, within the, the areas that we socialise in. And um, I guess the most simple answer is obviously talking about it with our peers, with our family, with our um, community, you know, to be... Um, mindful and aware of what's going on around us you know speaking up when you're seeing um, behavior that that is possibly crossing people's boundaries and you know I can only speak from like the festival kind of community that I'm in because I don't you know I don't go out to like clubs and bars and pubs and it's not really um, my um, spaces of um, you know, socializing um, but, you know, these small festivals that I go to, you know, often people are too afraid to step into a situation, um, you know, because of the culture, the fact that it is kind of a space where it tries to let people express and um, connect with themselves and with others and with the land in a more um, less restraint way, if I can put it that way. And so often people are quite hesitant to step in and say, hey, look, um, is everything all right here because they don't want to impose on someone else's kind of sovereign free will. But obviously there is times when that does need to happen. And, you know, if something does seem off, then just saying something to one of those people is off, can often be enough just to kind of, um, I guess, stop something from happening that may have happened if, if no one had said anything. So, you know, if someone seems rather intoxicated and the other person seems to be taking advantage of the situation, yes, okay, it might seem like they might be boyfriend, girlfriend, or they could be married, or like, you know, they could have other kind of, some other kind of relationship that you've established in your mind that you perceive to be true, and um, that may not be the case. So just checking in with someone um, is always good. And, yeah, like, obviously calling people out on behaviour that's not okay doesn't necessarily have to be done in public. But, um, you know, especially if it's a friend of yours, being able to talk to them one-on-one -on -one, um, when they're in, like, in a level head, just sort of saying, hey, like, you know, get, having a good discussion with them about it, try not to have any judgment of it, and um, hopefully that would be enough for them to then check in with themselves about their behaviour that they may be engaging in. So, yeah, that is um, my, my video that I wanted to share with you, um, some things I wanted to share with you around consent. What is it? Um, why is it important to be aware of it? And obviously, what can we do about it? I'd also encourage you to uh, think outside the box of intimate relationships when I'm talking to you about this and also look at other areas in your life, like what other things are you consenting to? Are you, um, you know, are you comfortable with your nose or, um, you know, whether that be giving or receiving and things like your work situa situation, your family um, relations and, you know, other things around like authority and whatnot. So, yeah, let me know um, if you have, um, I guess, you know, if you have a lot that you want to talk about uh, in regards to this topic, you're welcome to leave that in the comment section down below or you can contact me through um, the other social media um, platforms and I have an email address down there as well. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.